Hello folks, Steven, KC3DSO. I just want to go over my latest iteration for a mast holder on the front of my truck. My truck is a Ford F350 Super Duty. What I used was a flagpole holder and the rear receiver. Uh, the rear receiver is a class five, uh, so I had to use a little bit of an insert. And I had to put a little bit of an extender in the back so I could open up the tailgate. It was always in the way. So I decided to go ahead and put a class three receiver on the front, which I did. I have one of those storage racks you get from Harbor Freight, they're about 80 bucks. If you put them on a class five receiver, which is in the back, they'll do 750. If you put them on a class three in the front, or a class three receiver anyway, they'll do 500. But I use it for simple stuff like a generator, wood, fuel, things I don't want to put in the back. So this is what I've done. Uh, that's been a little bit of a nuisance. Then I was taking out this rack and I was taking it out, sitting it on the ground, and then I was throwing in the flagpole holder and putting a single mast into that, and that worked okay. But there had to be a simpler way. I never take this thing off. I never take the rack off. It only weighs about 60 pounds or so. So I never ever took it off. So I figured I'd go ahead and use it for something that made my life a little bit easier. So what I've decided to do is, as you can see, I've cut 19 inch schedule 40, two inch PVC. A couple of spots here, one on the other end. And what this allows me to do is to simply drop the mask in place and I'm literally up in just a few minutes. This has been fantastic. This is a fiberglass model. This is the aluminum one. They both fit in the tubes, no problem. I have them spread apart a little bit to give me a little bit of room in between. One of them generally holds my HF antenna at about 24 feet, and that's either a link dipole, quad band link dipole, or a 80 to 10 NFED. So it has to be a little bit robust. So I tend to use the aluminum poles for that, and the last section or two is fiberglass just to keep the metal away from the antenna. The other fiberglass set, I usually put on top of it a dual band Yagi, which is one of the uh, satellite antennas. I think it's an arrow, and I simply have a little brackets for it, and I can rotate it either 70 or, four, or 2 meters, depending upon what I'm doing at the time, most of the time it is on 2 meters, so I can hit packet station. All this is geared towards MCOM for Aries work. But this was okay, and this, this worked out well, but the problem I had was, as you can imagine, you get six of these tubes on top of each other. I mean, I have it up 24 feet, they're four foot each, and it got to be a little bit unwieldy, uh, trying to hold this thing in any kind of a breeze. A couple of times I thought I was gonna drop it on the truck. There had to be a better way. So what I came up with is this. Let me move the camera over a little bit here so you can see. I'm gonna move this down here. So this is what I've got. It's a simple rotatable mount for the masts. This is a simple 1,000 pound folding tongue jack. Harbor Freight sells these for about 15 bucks. And all this is, is it basically a little under a two inch tube. All I do is strip out the insides, grind it up a little bit to make it smooth. And now, all I have to do is pull the latch. I drop it down. I can assemble the antenna mast on the ground. The pieces, all of them on the ground, just lift it up just a little bit until I get it inside. And then I can simply rotate it up into position and it locks. So this is, I haven't actually tried this yet, but there's absolutely no reason why this won't work. 15 bucks, I used all the same hardware that came with it originally. Let me move this. Let me move this up just a bit here so you can see. So this is all the original hardware with the exception of some smaller bolts. It goes right through the grate, locks in very, very tight. It isn't moving. The only thing that's wobbling a little bit is the rotatable section on the uh, turn here. And that's it. I had to do a little bit of grinding here in the middle. Uh, there's the crank hole and a support hole that was here. I had to do some grinding in there as you can see but it works perfectly now. So it works good for the aluminum masts. I can drop it in either way, male or female, it doesn't matter, it slides right in. Now the mast that I use for my UHF VHF is an MFJ fiberglass 33 foot mast, which is this one here. It's the uh, 1910. 
And this is what I use for my UHF VHF roll up J pole. Uh, the J pole only weighs a few ounces. I can put it right at the very top. I Velcro it two or three places on the way down where the BNC connections are and the cabling. And the antenna really doesn't move that much, even in a reasonable wind. Much more weight than that, and it uh, wouldn't work too well. Now, the problem with this model is it's too tall for you to get it up inside of these sleeves. So, what I've done, I've done two things. Well, what I'm planning to do. So, so I can't put this in here uh, without loosening up the wing nuts, raising this up a little bit, and then I can drop this inside because this will fit inside the two inch U bolts, but it will not fit inside the two inch PVC. So I have to slide this up, drop this inside the, the uh, U bolt, and then I can put this over top of this and tighten it up so it doesn't break or bend the fiberglass mass. And that only takes about a minute or so and it works pretty good. But the other option here, you stay up here, Pop. I'm going to take you for a quick walk here once I'm done with this video. So what I can do here is I simply just have to pull the pin, rotate it. I can rotate it either way. Whoop, wrong end. Oh, I want to take that, actually, the rubber grommet off. I think that makes it a little bit easier. That's the cap. Now all I have to do is send this inside like this. And then I pull the pin, pull it up, and then I just simply rotate it like that. And now it's locked in place. So it's a lot faster and a lot easier than unscrewing this one, raising this up, dropping it inside the U-bolts, putting this back down over top and tightening it up. So I bought a second one of these and I'm gonna put it over here. I'm gonna leave this one here. I'm gonna cut this one just a little bit shorter and I think I'm gonna put it here. So the, generally when I set up the radios, this one on this side now will be the HF antenna. And what this is going to allow me to do is I can assemble the pole here and then I just need to tilt it a little bit, drop it inside and just walk it straight up and I'm done. It's a lot safer and easier. So the whole goal here is I'm going to put a second one of these rotatables, uh, the swing levels, here. So I can use one for the HF antenna and I can use one for this. And then the last one will be the fiberglass poles. I will put into either this one or this one. I'm going to put another one here. And that will allow me to put the dual band uh, Yagi on it. So as I set up, I will have th at least three antennas set up. I may not need them every single time, but it will be a simple thing for me to do should I need to do it. My next project is going to be cabling, and this is going to be th now at the present time with three antennas, three cables going back to the operating station in the back of the truck or on the tailgate. So what I'm going to do is right inside of here, either inside the bumper or inside the engine compartment, there's a little bit of room in there, I'm going to put a triplexer. And what that's going to allow me to do is I can now hook up all three antennas to the one triplexer one run piece, then I can only have to run one piece of LMR 400 under the cab, into the grommet, into the back of the truck, and then use another triplexer to unsplit the signal. And then I can have just one cable, triplexer here, triplexer on the other end, and then have my radios only have one cable going into the truck. Then I'm going to make one hole in the grommet. And then all of those, I just split them again and go to the separate radios or the two uh, connectors on the back of each of the radios, depending upon which radio I decide to use. So that's what my, my plan is. And this has actually worked out pretty good. In the description, I will give you the model number. These are on sale right now for $15. It takes you a few minutes to grind out the inside of it because they do some press fitting with some of the innards to make sure they don't fall out and you can't completely unscrew them. It's a safety thing. So a little bit of work and you're done and it works very, very well. Uh, this is the uh, Hallmaster model and it comes from Harbor Freight and that's about $60 or $80. They also make an aluminum one. It doesn't hold as much. It's a little bit more money. It looks really nice. But to be honest with you, I haven't looked at it to see if I can do this. These pieces are about 19 inches. These are a little bit less because of these strength bars here. Now even though it hits here and it's here, they still fit inside. Both 
the fiberglass and the aluminum fit inside with no problem. I just hit these with a little bit of Krylon. Now you see I've scratched it up, moving it around, trying to decide what kind of stuff I want to do. I need to uh, wire wheel this too and do some flat back, flat black painting on it as well. So thanks for watching. Any comments down below? Thank you. KC3DSO.